everybody, welcome to Dad Got This. What are we doing today? Today's another tech video. Today, we're gonna tackle the age old question of what is a good camera setup for a new vlogger? You see, I did a video about my new camera that I was really excited about that I purchased and I showed it to all my vlogging friends and they quickly showed me that I was speaking a different language to them. They were super confused by all the nerd terms I was throwing around like aperture and ISO and F1.8 and bokeh and depth of field. Like they were just staring at me or in the chat virtually. Like I was speaking another language. Like I was speaking Ewokese at them. If you're not a Star Wars nerd like dad, that's the language that Ewoks speak in Star Wars. Nerd tangent aside. It quickly made me realize that maybe I know a little bit more about cameras than I thought, and I might be able to help out some of my vlogging friends figure out what's a good camera for them. So today we're gonna catch beatbox. So today we're gonna go and figure out just what are cameras, what are the basic types of cameras that are out there, what's a good camera for you as a new vlogger to do this. Dad decided to enlist the help of a professional. Everybody, I'd like to introduce Camera Nerd Dad. What's up, everybody? Why are you dressed like that? And why did you do that? Like what? You look like Peter McKinnon got stung by a bee and had an allergic reaction. Are you stealing his bit? No. I'm being inspired by it. It's his fault for doing a video on how to do this. We'll put the link up in the, the thing here and then down below. Whatever. You say you're a camera expert. Where did you get your certification from? YouTube. Okay, I'll accept that. Can you help explain to these fine people a little bit about the basics of cameras and what would be a good camera for a new vlog? I got this. Hey, that's my thing. No, really, really, I got this. You could, You can go. Sheesh. Guess it's his show now. All right, there are three basic types of cameras when it comes to vlogging, really. And the fact is that most of you actually have a fantastic vlogging camera right in your pocket. Your phone. Today's phones, like the iPhone 11 and the new Samsung Galaxies, are fantastic. The cameras are amazing, they're super fast. Most people, when they ask me, what camera should I get as a new vlogger? My very next question is, what kind of phone do you have? Because if you even have something remotely new, it doesn't have to be the new iPhone 11 Pro Max, but it should be. 99% of the time, I would recommend to somebody to get a good phone or use the phone they have and spend some money on some accessories to kit the phone out and make it a great vlogging setup. Let's talk about phones as vlogging cameras and setups and go over some pros and cons. The first pro, you most likely already have it. You don't have to go out and spend extra money on camera equipment to start vlogging. Pro, they're easy to use. Most of you already know exactly how to record videos on your phone. You don't need any kind of crazy learning curve. You don't need to learn complex things about cameras. Pro, quality. Honestly, the quality coming out of phones these days is amazing. They are so good looking in most scenarios that going out and spending money on a camera is, is almost a waste in most cases. Pro, they're lightweight. They don't weigh a ton. They're easy to carry around with you in your pocket. Even on a, a rigged up setup, it's not that bad. And you don't have to carry around this heavy mamma jamma of a camera. Does anyone say mamma jamma? I say man, Jim. You're more likely to use it and vlog if it's not cumbersome. Pro, accessories aplenty. They make so much stuff for phones these days to kit them out. External microphones, special cases, lenses, apps, everything you could make to make an awesome vlogging rig with your phone is available these days and most likely on Amazon with two day shipping from Prime. And the final pro, live streaming on a mobile device. Let's say that you are out in the parks and you're at Magic Kingdom and you want to live stream for Magic Kingdom. Well, guess what? 
But you need a phone to do that, basically. If you ever plan to possibly go live stream for mobile, you're gonna want a phone. Speaking of going live stream mobile, that guy did a video on how to go live on YouTube with less than a thousand subscribers on a mobile device. We'll throw the link up here and in the description below. Go watch it, it's not bad, he's okay. So you might be thinking, great, video over. iPhones are the end all be all, or phones, I'm, I'm particular to the iPhone, are the end all be all of vlogging setups and you don't need to know anything else and yet we can just call that guy in and he can do his outro that he doesn't do. Well, it's not, unfortunately. There are some cons to phone vlogging. Let's go over those right now. Con, videos look like they were shot on a phone in most cases. There's a look to phone videos. It has to do with a bunch of techie stuff that we won't get into, but they just look like they were shot on a phone versus shot on a professional camera. You can get around that and there's some things you can do, but they just don't look quite as cinematic as video shot on a regular camera. Con, space. Shooting high quality videos can take up a ton of space. It, you can quickly fill up a phone if you are shooting some super high res video and a lot of it. There's all kinds of ways to get around that, but it's just something you're gonna need to deal with. Con, battery. Phones have built-in batteries and they run down. There are workarounds. You can get power banks and things like that, but you still kind of either have to wait for them to charge or have this cord attached. But in most cases, battery's an issue you're gonna have to deal with. Okay, that's the pros and cons of phone vlogging. So what's the next most common camera that you'll see a lot of vloggers using? It's a point and shoot camera. What is a point and shoot camera? It's just a camera that you turn on and take video. I would show you one, but I don't have one. Examples of these cameras are things like the Canon PowerShot series, the Sony Z series. So you'd expect the next section of this video to be going over the pros and cons of point and shoot cameras. We're not even gonna do that because in my opinion, there's absolutely no reason these days to go out and purchase a point and shoot camera. In 90% of the cases, a phone is better than a point and shoot camera. You just don't gain enough to warrant purchasing a point and shoot camera over a phone, even a cheap phone. So if we're gonna say skip over point and shoot cameras, what, what's the next kind of camera? It's an interchangeable lens system camera. Sounds super complicated. What is an interchangeable lens system camera? In most basic terms, it's a camera that you can take the lens off and put a new lens on. Hold on, let me show you. I think there's one back there. This is an interchangeable lens system camera. This is an old camera. But if you notice, you push a button here, spin here, and you can take the lens off the camera. And now you've got the body and the lens. The lens is the eye. It's what sees the image and transfers that image to the brain. The camera body is the brain. So the eye sees the image and the body records it. Very simple. Why would you want to be able to take the lens off the camera in the first place? Well, you can switch lenses. You can put a different lens on this camera and get basically a completely different camera. Being able to swap the lens is super useful and will get you the best results in a wide variety of scenarios. Let's talk about the pros and cons of an interchangeable lens system. Pro, usability. These cameras are awesome from that standpoint because they have things like batteries that swap out. When the battery dies, you have a couple of extra batteries and you can go ahead and put in a fresh battery and keep shooting if you put it in the right way. The other thing that's pretty nice about these cameras is they have removable media. You can put in and swap out cards. Everything is stored on what's called an SD card. So when your card gets full, you can go ahead and have extra cards and put in a new card. Pro, versatility. These cameras can do it all. You have full control over everything. 
you can change every little setting if you want to and make it perfect to get the perfect shot in every scenario. Plus, you can also throw them in auto and get pretty great results without knowing any of the camera nerdy stuff that I know. But just like vlogging on a phone, vlogging on one of these also has some cons. So let's go over them. Con, size. They're big. Now, they make some much smaller versions like the one that we're shooting on here, the Canon M6 Mark II, some really small lenses, so there are, are some smaller available sizes, but no matter how small they are, it's still bigger and weighs more than a phone. Con, ease of use. If you wanna get the most out of the camera, you're gonna wanna learn some stuff. You're gonna wanna learn about all those different nerd settings and things like that. So there could be a little bit more of a learning curve involved to really get the best out of the camera. Con, cameras can get really expensive. They can go up into multiple thousands of dollars. And when you start adding in the cost of lenses, prices can get ridiculous. But there are some value options out there which are very affordable and come with great kit lenses that you don't have to go out and spend a bunch of money on lenses. So you might be sitting there wondering, but what about action cameras like the GoPro and the Insta360? What about them? Can I vlog on those? They're tiny, they'd be great. Unfortunately, there's just some drawbacks that are inherent to them that make them not that great for normal vlogging. There's a bunch of things, it's, it's hard to get external mics and things like that, and the way their sensors are and their lenses are. A phone is still better than those in most cases. It's gonna give you a better image and better variety, unless you are a water sports vlogger. You're big into snorkeling and surfing and beach stuff and you're always in the water and you're doing underwater photography, then you're gonna probably wanna have a GoPro or something like a waterproof camera. Unless that's your channel, go with the phone. In conclusion, if I were to recommend to a new vlogger a setup, it would be a phone setup with some great accessories. This is the kit that dad vlogs on most of the time when he is out and about. It is a super simple setup with a little tripod, a mount for the camera, phone, and an external mic. With this setup, you will get fantastic audio, great looking picture, it's light, and it's easy to use. You can do the little vlogging trick where you extend the thing, boom. I'm vlogging myself, I've got a great mic, Audio is awesome. Everything is great in the world with this style setup. And it's not expensive. This is like a Willy Bobo version of the uh, Gorillapod. So it's not even that expensive. Watch this channel for a full video on vlogging on phones and the setup and some of the accessories and a buying guide for what to buy to get yourself started on the cheap to get a great phone vlogging setup. One of the things that you need to ask yourself is, what kind of vlogger am I? Or what kind of vlogger will I be? Am I the kind of vlogger that is gonna go out and about in the parks and go to Disney and Universal and people wanna see where I'm at and like the atmosphere is really important? Well, if that's the kind of vlogger you are, some of the benefits of an interchangeable lens camera and the things they can do like blur out the background and make it look really creamy and cinematic. Well, that's not that important to you because people don't wanna look at Cinderella's castle super blurred the bejesus out. They wanna see all that cool Disney stuff going on behind you. So even if you did have that nice camera, you probably wouldn't set it to the settings to blur the background out as much as that. You would just set it so that things are in focus, which is basically what a phone does. So you're losing a lot of the benefits of an interchangeable lens system because of the type of vlogging that you're gonna do. Are you a food vlogger where you need to take amazing photos of food and you do a lot of these like talking head shots and studio shots? Well, in those scenarios, an interchangeable lens camera comes in really handy. Phones take good photos, but they don't take photos like these where you're using a real lens and a real camera and you can really do photography-y stuff. Now, to do that photography-y stuff, you're gonna need to learn some stuff about exposure 
and shutter speed and ISO and all that kind of stuff. But don't worry, that dad guy's gonna do a series of videos on all that stuff in a really basic way to help you learn it. You've decided that you do wanna get an interchangeable lens camera for whatever reason it may be. There's a couple of questions you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself before you go out and make your purchase. One is what's my budget? How much money do I have to spend? Am I looking in the thousand dollar camera range? Thousands of dollars even? Or am I looking in the budget level? We're gonna talk more about the budget level because this is aimed at people who are just getting started and probably don't have or need $5,000 cameras. So ask yourself a few questions. Do I need 4K? What am I using that 4K for? What about super slow motion? Do I need that? What am I gonna use that for? Once you kind of get an idea on what you're gonna need the camera for, if you don't know what 4K are, or you don't really understand how super slow motion works and what you would use it for, guess what? You don't need a super high end expensive camera. You can get away with something a little bit on the cheaper end. What camera would I recommend to a new person just getting into the vlogging thing and who wants a camera? The Canon M50. Yeah, it's older. Not old, but older. It's been out for a few years. The thing is, it's inexpensive and it has everything a new vlogger would need. It has a flip out screen so you can see yourself while vlogging. It has the mic port so you can hook up an external microphone. It shoots all of the great frame rates that you'd want in 1080, which is perfect resolution for going to YouTube. Now there are two features that the Canon M50 is really missing. One of them is really usable 4K footage. The 4K footage, and in case you don't know what 4K is, it's just the resolution or how big the image is when you shoot it on the camera. Um, how many dots and pixels are in that information. And it just means that when you play it on like a bigger screen or even a smaller screen, it picks up finer details and things like that. The thing is, most people on YouTube are watching this stuff on their phones. And even if they are watching it on um, a TV or something like that, or a computer, YouTube compresses everything after you upload it. So 99% of the time, a person is not gonna be able to tell the difference between 1080 and 4K footage after it's been uploaded and encoded and crushed by YouTube. So it's not really that big a downside for the M50. The other one is the slow motion. It only shoots 120 frames slow motion in 720p. Now you're talking starting to get a little bit lower useful resolutions, meaning it's not even the good 1080, which is what most stuff on YouTube would be shot at. So it's slow mos not that great, and it loses some of the auto focuses and things like that. So that is a downside to the M50. The Canon M50 is great. They're like 500 bucks or so with a kit lens, and it's a great kit lens. It's the same kit lens that comes with the camera that we're using to record today. It has a great focal range. You can do up close stuff. It's wide enough to vlog when you're holding it handheld. You can zoom in a little bit to catch things that are further away. Everything on it is pretty darn great for the price. Now, if you wanna upgrade from that a little bit, go ahead and upgrade to the Canon M6 Mark II. Dad actually, that guy did a full review on why he chose the M6 Mark II for YouTube, and we'll put the link up here and down in the description. Seems like I'm a Canon fanboy. Well, the reason I'm recommending Canons right now is because Canons menu system and using them and the dials is probably the most user-friendly out of all the camera systems for somebody who doesn't know cameras and is just getting into this and starting to learn they're gonna be easier for the novice to pick up and get up to speed. Hey, can I come back in? I guess so. Thanks for taking over my channel and helping with this one. No problem. Let me know if you need any uh, help with the tough stuff like aperture and uh, shutter speed and 180 degree rule and all that kind of stuff. I'd, I'd be happy to help. For sure. I'll be doing a video on those to help explain them in the most basic terms and help turn you into a YouTube camera nerd like this guy. Don't you need to do an outro or something? Oh, dad doesn't do outros. So that's it? I double dog here to subscribe 
and hit that bell so you don't miss any of dad's dad ventures in tech, cooking, ridiculousness, and just whatever the heck is going on in his life. Make sure you don't become a dad video misser. They're really sad.